Scoopity boop. Ah. <sighs> Naomi, I am losing steam today. Oh my gosh, I was just getting ready to say, I'm losing steam, Melissa. I'm losing steam. <laughs> All I've had is water and honeydew melon, and that was, uh, so it was 324 in the, in the afternoon now. Oh. I ate that, like, at 8 o'clock this morning, and I've also been up since 6 a.m., so I'm, I'm definitely losing coffee. steam. Coffee and the one bagel I had since, like, 5 o'clock this morning. Yeah. But I've now had two protein bars, so well, just that'll do skills it. everywhere. Oh, or like sprinkles everywhere. So I just, so hopefully I'll stop shaking and then we can do that. <laughs> it's funny, but not funny. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to TBR Lowdown, everyone. Hello. Girl dinner. <laughs> Girl dinner is gonna be like I'm ordering a fucking pizza. I was gonna, I was, I'm already cursing. I'm so tired. Ooh. I was going to make a like chickpea and lentil soup. Mm-hmm. But I can't be arsed. I'm not doing it. You uh, know what? I may get a pizza too. Tomorrow. I haven't had I'll pizza in so long. I'm. I could go for a little, a little pizza, Lito's pizza. I deserve to be pampered today i've done yeah. so much i moved a treadmill Naomi. i know plus i gotta edit tonight these you know these episodes or whatever and get ready for tomorrow you know what that's a great idea thanks pizza. for that thanks pizza. everybody for coming along while we decide that we're gonna eat some pizza that's right join us have pizza for dinner tonight make it happen all right whatever you're doing drop and get a pizza drop everything <laughs> and get a pizza yeah now i'm kind of stoked about it okay yeah. We'll always Yay. Pizza. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right, here we are again. Our our last one for the day. Our last one yeah. for the day. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> why don't you let us know what you've just finished what? or what you're currently reading? Yes. Well, I'm currently reading it. I haven't finished it, but it's very good. Uh, and thank you to Knopf for sending this to me. This is Wife John. This is Mrs. Orwell's Invisible Life by Anna Funder. Mm. This is a narrative nonfiction about Orwell's wife who it has been sort of written out of existence. Um, and it's touching on a lot of things that I've sort of been reading late, lately and it's actually going to loop into my recommendation for the end of the show. But um, this has been really, really, really fascinating. Uh, I am, I'm like just about halfway and you it's it's structured based on these letters that the author finds uh that were written by the by Orwell's wife to a friend of hers and she uses those letters to then piece together uh the wife's existence uh so for example Orwell goes to Spain during the Spanish Civil War and he writes a story that is about that time there and she, the author finds Anna finds Orwell's wife in that that narrative Mm -hmm. um she tells uh the story uh of eileen o'shaughnessy that's his wife's name um she she reimagined well she she kind of reimagines some parts but she she's pulling out uh eileen's story from the shadows of orwell's life and so you're getting this narrative nonfiction sort of telling of what eileen's doing while she's Mm -hmm. say in spain during the spanish civil war and then she's pulling in pieces from Orwell's work and showing where he has kind of written her out of it, where Ooh. he's saying, you know, like these things have happened and I did X, Y, and Z, but it sort of just emits her throughout. It also takes a look at what their relationship was like. Um, mm-hmm. There's a little bit of continuing the speculation about how, whether or not uh, Orwell was Queer in some way and was perhaps repressing it he did have uh there's quite a bit of i wasn't aware of that particular narrative and um there's a lot of uh to me weirdly homophobic things that get said by orwell where you're like well why did you say that and i can kind of see where maybe that's why people have this question mark of perhaps he's he's actually queer there's also some other things with some some boys that happen like in school and stuff but um yeah, it's a very interesting story, and it's it and sounds it's like it. Just it, it continuing my like I hate men, <laughs> <laughs> um, but 
Yeah, like, and, and Eileen was like a writer in her own right, and she like typed up all of his books and his and his works, and she's just kind of forgotten. Uh, he's also was like a, a, a notorious philanderer, and um, so like that's also like how many of these men aren't are right. like it's it's really good. It's a very interesting look, and I didn't realize that George Orwell isn't even like his actual name. Like his real name is like Eric or something. Oh, and it's just weird to me because I'm like. At some point, I was re- I'm reading this, and and something happens, and I'm like, is this what happens when you have somebody that goes by two names? Because she says something, she's like, or maybe I should say Eric, you know, like right. She says something makes me think about it. It's like, is this part of his thing? Is like he is two people. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You become like when you write when you become an entity that isn't you. So like you're John Smith, but you're famous for being mm-hmm. whoever. Um. Do you lose that self of your sense of self? I think it probably depends on like the level of um, stardom or something that you have and how you're able to deal with that. Some people have a very hard time not losing themselves in all of the stardom. Mm -hmm. You know, also, I believe a lot of times stardom brings out the worst in people, like your worst true self. That's that sounds really really interesting. It's really good. It's really well written, and and like Eileen's very interesting. She has this whole life that like when she gets married, she gets sort of shunted onto this farm in the middle of nowhere, and she's living this life. And like she she has these moments it seems so far where she gets to burst out of that and break out of it, and and live a, a much more um, robust life. Like when she goes to Spain, uh, she's do- she's doing some interesting things down there. Um, and she sounds like a very interesting woman, a very powerful mm-hmm. woman um, who kind of gets relegated to the shadows behind her much more like, I don't know, famous and whatever husband. And I just feel like it's a story that's very common um, for women to be sort of pushed to the periphery and whatever. So like, sure, maybe she's not like a published author or whatever but she is a, a large piece of his ability to be who he is um you know she does a lot for the home she does a lot of things and this is where we're going to tie into the book we'll talk about um at the end but it's um yeah like how like you know you take on a lot of burden and being a writer is a very like uh private thing um and you need a lot of personal space and time and to like think and do things and women tend to take on all that domestic labor and like intellectual yeah. labor and all of that. And if you don't have somebody doing that for you, it becomes very hard as a woman to, to be as successful as a man or to mm-hmm. whatever. So like, anyway, so her contributions to his ability to be who he becomes is very, is very forgotten and not. Um, wow. That's just, you know. I really am, good. I am so, I'm going to have to get that. Yes, you are. It's very good. Thank you, Knopf. Uh, I can't wait to finish it and to figure out Eileen's full true story. And wow. Mm, okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Um, mine is not going to be as long as yours because this is like the third book in a series. But mm-hmm. I am reading A Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin. This is book three in the um, A Song of Ice and Fire series and um i i'm i just started i'm like 50 pages in but i from my hardcore fantasy people that i follow on booktube many of them say book three is their absolute favorite so i am so psyched to just really dig deep into this one um i've been loving the series i read a game of thrones twice i read a clash of kings twice i'll probably read this twice I just love it. I'm, I'm, That's long I'm. It'll take me to read it with you. Okay, look, I'm riding hard for the series. I'm, I'm loving it. Um, so I also realized that there are quite a few people who are new to fantasy. So when I, when I mentioned the term grimdark, they're like, "Well, what is that?" It's just a subgenre of fantasy, and this series, A Song of Ice and Fire, is a good example um, of that. So because it seems to me that a lot of the newer fantasy readers only are familiar with fantasy. Wait, ro- romanticy. That's what you said, right? That's how you romanticy. So they're not yet aware of all the other subgenres that are in the fantasy world. So um, yes, this is a good example of grimdark, which is a subgenre that I prefer. So yeah, 
take your time with it because you know I'm going to read this twice. You know it already. Yeah, know. So I'm take your time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> not worried about it. <laughs> All right. Um, so what are we talking about today? Do well, you know? do I know? <laughs> <laughs> this is an updated, this is an update to a conversation that we had, uh, I don't know, a few episodes back mm-hmm. uh, about bindery. Did we yeah. talk about that our first episode or second that was of, our first of season back, three? We, we, our first episode of season three, we talked about bindery, which yeah. is a new social media platform is that what we want to call it or you know what what do we want to call it what what do they call it i don't know what do we call it i don't know but anyway so they this is company that is like a publish like a they're like gonna they're work a publisher taste maker taste makers who are just book influencers they're exactly uh, on tiktok for predominantly um to create like book clubs essentially so it's kind of yes. like patreon meets i don't know what publishing i, I yes I, I i don't know and so you're supposed to be like they have a handful of tastemakers that they've gotten on board and they're doing a bunch of like pr for it on tiktok and they have launched finally their actual platforms and the idea is that you have a monthly subscription i guess to these mm-hmm. platforms and you get extra content and more longer form content. Like, oh, hello, you have you have YouTube, but anyway, um, right? And then somehow in all of this, these tastemakers get an opportunity to help bring a book to fruition, not their own, like to to be part of the publishing process on a book. Uh, right. And part of that is to then use their audiences, it sounds like, to market said book. Uh, they have their own imprints on, and there's air quotes on all this, uh, uh, on this platform, this bindery platform. And in that first episode, I signed up on their Google form. Uh-huh, and yep. no, I have not been invited to be a tastemaker. So don't get your like confetti cannons out just yet. <laughs> but I did get an email from them back. This is why they're never going to, they're never going to have me because if they ever find the podcast they're gonna be i know that's that's fine <laughs> the that's ladies fine. been chronicle chronicling this on a podcast for for a while so it says thank you again for joining the bindery waitlist you're most welcome um they wanted to let me know that after a slight delay they launched the public beta so that was a launch back on september 14th so it's been up for a couple of days mm-hmm. i have the links they sent me the links to some of the tastemakers and so i can see what's on offer there's include it includes a shoppable bookshelf featuring books that have been discussed by tastemakers a membership experience with exclusive content community and merch benefits um, and a publishing imprint for taste make for select tastemakers not for everybody mm-hmm. uh, and then the imprints are are an invite only thing so like i guess bindery invites you if they think that you have enough of a presence to warrant yes are you worthy <laughs> are you worthy of it? um and that they're yeah. supposed to be adding more tastemakers throughout the fall and by the end of the year. Um, so that like, uh, oh, and by the end of the year, offer an onboarding experience so anyone can start a bindery membership. So basically by the end of the year, I could just start a bindery membership. Right, like. right. Um, it's interesting. Uh, I don't really know how I feel about some of these people that are <laughs> on their first list. But, when I mean, I'm on William's bookshelf at the moment, because I was trying to see, like, what does this app really look like? You know, because I was like, yeah. what is it? And what it looks like is it is like the feed is a mix of being on Instagram and being on YouTube. Mm-hmm. That's or, and, and also being on a sub stack. So like uh, an Instagram post, a YouTube video and then like a sub stack newsletter, like all rolled into one is what it looks like to me. So but I don't. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's interesting that you can get, uh, there's also like an element of, so I'm looking at the tiers for easy cat, who's somebody I think we all know. Cause we see like reels. If you see any of like the reels and TikToks, I think he comes up quite a bit. There's a lot of manga. Okay. Um, let me, let me click on him so I can look with you. The $5 a month is access to exclusive content, members only discord, participant in uh, publishing decisions and eBooks to all to be published books. I mean, I think it's nice that they give you ebooks. That's kind of nice. Twelve dollars, you get exclusive content, all that stuff. You get ebooks of all to be published books. Um, 
can you get to pub like participate in publishing decisions which i don't know if you put in the other one i can't remember anymore my short-term memory is shot to hell submit questions to monthly video with with the creator and to be published authors and after 90 days you get early print copies of to be published with a custom bookmark um but for 25 dollars a month you can have access to all that stuff and you get early signed copies and cover art and your name in the thank you pages. And that's where it starts to sound like a Kickstarter because yeah. I've done two Kickstarters this year for two indie authors that I really love Katie Wismer mm-hmm. and um, the late Emily McCosh, you know, the lady who did that uh, really beautiful purple book that I showed you that was, Oh yeah. Illustrated herself. Yes. Um, that was phenomenal. And she's got this, I have to get back to it. Sci-fi novella series. I really wish she would just come out with like a bind up of all of those and I could just buy that and read it that way. But right. anyway, um, I, 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 they both had Kickstarters this year for new things and I supported them because I, I really like it. And it's the same sort of thing. Well, I don't mm-hmm. pay you every month. I give you a right. hundred bucks, 20 bucks, whatever I can afford or want to afford. And right. I get some things for it and I help you out and I move on with my life. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't mind a subscription model. I mean, I obviously have my own Patreon. We have a Patreon. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I think that there's nothing wrong with wanting to either give somebody more access to you in a like condensed form or to just generate more income for yourself or to get paid better um in some way i think that's all fine like if you put work in like you should get paid for your work right like i think that's crazy um but this platform is what's weird to me this but platform here's... feels very predatory it feels like it still feels like an MLM to me. It feels like these people are leveraging these creators for their network of, of viewers, and they're the only ones that are really going to make out with this. Yeah. And isn't there, like, an affiliate program as well? Do you remember from our first conversation, there was a discussion um, of affiliate links? And I cannot figure out what the affiliate thing is. Is that selling the books? Is that right. getting people to sign on? I don't think we figured it out. On? We haven't figured that out yet. But well, also, here's one of my other main questions. Okay, so you've got these creators that have a bindery account. But is the mm-hmm. content, like, available on their Instagram anyway? Or the YouTube channel anyway? Because if it is, then why would I pay for this? I don't think so. Um, it looks like some of these are their TikToks. If I'm just looking through easy casting. I just want to say, we're not criticizing any of these creators. This is purely a commentary on whatever this bindery thing is. Um, it looks like if you go down in his feed, that a lot so of this it is stuff just is his already TikToks. out, right? So, and you can buy books from these TikToks. But I mean, I can buy them anyway from anywhere. Oh, and when you do click on a book to buy it, and you go to buying options, it says you can go to bookshop.org or Amazon. So. I think these are just affiliate links for Amazon. Like you could have all of this in your right. description in a YouTube video. Right. So again, like I'm paying for what? Well, you know that's what I mean? like, well, I what's... don't know if they pay. Do they pay? Well, they are paying because they're going to take, I think, uh, why they're don't, what's a the cut. cut? What's the cut that they take? Yeah, they're taking a cut, but I'm just saying like as someone, like why would I, why would I join? I don't see what the draw would be. I'm picking, oh, William, you went to William too. I'm looking at William's book. Yeah, look at, I, I looked at William first. That's just books that they've read and affiliate links. He only has two levels. Oh, well, I guess he's got videos associated with it. So if you, like, I just clicked on Lord of the Rings and that brought me to some sort of bookshelf tour from April. See, okay, okay. So it looks so like for this instance, is older content that there's being like there's nothing wrong with like rehashing content. Like, look, right? I'm not it mad it at isn't, that. but I don't want to pay for stuff that's already out there. But also, it, so his producer tier for twelve dollars. So it says un- unlock after ninety days producer credit on an audiobook. I do not care about that. <laughs> I don't know. I some people do I, though. Um, really? Yeah. Uh, I'm not one of those people. Just so you know. Um, I don't mind being in the thank you notes of like those two authors that I'm talking about. Yeah, like, I the tears that I got, I didn't get because I got an acknowledgement in the back. I got those tears because of other things, and they came with that. And it's like cool, acknowledge me. I don't care. Um, that's fine. Um, so it looks like he's Williams actually doing a book, and the book is fumes. 
and so there's a bunch of content if you click on that fumes book it looks like this has a lot of content around it specifically uh i guess around getting this book published oh it's uh, okay. his book it's his book uh-huh william dozier oh. okay oh this is gonna be interesting when i read this for a review um <laughs> Continuing in my I read booktuber book. Um. So, yeah, I... So is he publishing this through Bindery, though? Um, That I don't know. Also, the app just got really hung up for me. It's not doing anything. So I'm going to close it and open it back up. So... So I'm on Goodreads now. And I see his book fumes, and um, so it just came out August, August of this year. And there's a Kindle edition and a paperback edition. Paperback says it was indie published. Uh, huh. Yeah. Real short. The Kindle edition is 48 pages. The paperback is 91 pages. Interesting. I don't really know what that means. Um, hmm. I guess I'm still not understanding like what will be the draw for anyone to like join Bindery. You know, that's where I'm 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 yeah. lost. I don't know what the draw is. Because again, you're repurposing content. So, like, what am I paying for? And maybe I'm absolutely the wrong person. Like, I don't care about things like customized stickers or book. Like, I don't care about that kind of stuff. Um, I don't. I, like, I have no desire to be like listed as a producer on like like that. Does that stuff doesn't appeal to me? And um, I don't. Mm, I don't know. It's just very strange. I it tried to strange. click on the buying options for fumes and that didn't work. Also, like I'm telling you something about dudes in booktube, they really kick off like hard. They really do. They really, really do. Weird to me. So I want to, I want to click on, I want to see, I want to see who else they've selected. Um, I mean, okay, this person has three. This, so this is uh, Just Allie. I don't know who this is. She has three tiers as well. And when they say things like participate in publishing decisions, like what the heck does that mean? Does that mean you get to shout into the void? I, I do not know. I mean, it looks like for the most part, these tiers are the same. Well, she's got on her $25 tier. Participate in choosing my YouTube content. Like I, ju I don't know. Some of this feels real bogus to me. I, but again, these are things people have Patreon for, and it's 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 not the fact that they have these memberships that are set up or like they have Kofi Sports. That part doesn't bother me so much. It's it's this bindery sitting on top of it all that is weird to me because it really feels like I really would love to understand how much money bindery is taking from out of these. Membership. And I was I very interested we broke to it. see how many people are signing up for this. We broke that down on our first episode, so we did go over that. Um, yeah. Oh, here's a person of color. That's that's nice. There's one. Um, well, you shouldn't laugh, but yeah, there's one. <laughs> I thought I thought there were two people that weren't just white dudes, but yeah, here's another guy. Times New Rosen. He also has three tiers. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I guess to each there. Oh, here's another guy. He's got three tiers as well. So I guess you know it's it's live. Um, it's apparently going to go wide you know, by the end of the year and anybody can hook into this membership platform um, if you really wanted to. Uh, but then also, like, I just want to say, 
one of these people on here, because it's not about them, one of these people on here, every TikTok, like, they will make the same TikTok, like, seven times with different books going across the top of it. And oh. it really irritates me, because it's like, how is that content? Interesting. Okay. So that doesn't make me, like, if I see that, that doesn't make me, like, intrigued to want to see more longer form content from you. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like you All you can do is recycle the same TikTok sound and bit and then replace the books with new books. Like, it works for the algorithm, but, like, if I'm going to pay you money, that irritates me. Right. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, this... you earn 100% affiliate revenue from the book. How? The bindery uh, person does? Yeah. You earn 75% of subscription revenue and 100% of affiliate revenue. So they take a quarter of your... I don't know how much Patreon takes. They take quite a bit. I don't think Kofi takes anything. But this seems like a lot of work to maintain this. Especially it if you're is, looking especially for, if you I would have ass- other channels and other platforms you're working in. Do these people also have Patreon, existing Patreon and existing Discord? I wonder if you can have existing Patreons. Because what if you already had an existing Patreon that was like doing And why well? would you come over here? Right. That's just what I don't I don't I don't get it. And like unless it's you want this illustrious thing of helping a book be published, right? I mean, I guess. But I'm assuming you have to like have quite a draw to do that. It sounds like you have Absolutely. To be special, so I, I, just... I find this whole laundry thing very interesting. I don't know if this is the most interesting episode for everybody listening, but like I'm very, very perplexed by this binary thing. Yeah. Because we often have these conversations about, you know, creators launch things all the time, um, Patreons, et cetera. And there's always this discussion of like, what's an appropriate tier amount. Sometimes people come out with these wacky tiers. There are people who've come out recently with like, like $80 tiers for, I can't see what, and that's fine. I mean, if you have $80 a month to spend, cause you want to give it to a creator, that is your business. I don't care with your money, but from the outside looking at it being like you, why why like i i couldn't figure out a way to i i I don't think i could ask anybody to spend that much money on me 80 bucks and i wouldn't know what to give you that would feel like an appropriate exchange right to make that worth it Mm -hmm. yeah on top of it yeah for sure but i'm also an entire like like a a micro booktuber who has a very small following i barely have a following so like maybe i just don't get it you know I mean, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I am just still trying to understand this bindery. I don't know. I just don't know. I I don't know how I feel about it. And I'm still really confused about the whole publishing side of it and how how these bindery tastemakers are going to get paid how they're going to get paid but like what's their what's their role going to be in that like are they truly green light like are they the main green lighters of a book they really want to get published or like who who's the, they cannot be i don't yeah see i'm like i don't cuz okay so let's say that the bindery people you know the creators or whatever the 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 bindery creators and then the bindery tastemakers, if they don't agree on a particular book being published, I mean, I don't know what, how, like, how does that work? If mm-hmm. there's a bindery tastemaker that like is really pushing hard for bindery to publish his book, does bindery just say just a thumbs up automatically or do they need to discuss things to see if what this bindery tastemaker is recommended to, to be published worth publishing? Like, what does that whole process look like? Do they even recommend or do they just, are they kind of like given a pool and they're like, this is the one I'm going to market. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it sounds like 
I feel like that sounds like a more uh, probable decision. Right. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. I can't imagine that they would be like bringing books to the table. Maybe if you had like a really big creator who does this. I don't know. Somebody huge. Um, maybe. Right. But like, I. It sounds more like they're they're using. It sounds very. It still sounds very predatory to me. It sounds like you set up, uh, not just like a thing for anybody to use. Like Patreon takes money. YouTube takes money. Everybody takes money off of your membership thing. Right. Um. But it's just kind of like here's your like obligatory platform. Here you go. This sounds like they're gonna take you. You're gonna do, essentially, discounted or free work for the publisher. You're providing the publisher uh essentially like free marketing because they're getting paid on this because your membership people yeah. are the ones that are going to be potentially buying these books yeah and you're going to be they're gonna they're leveraging you to make more money. yes and you're yes. like i i don't know i don't know if you're being compensated appropriately for that um i'm i'm feeling like it's, it's so it's, early it's, it's a know. big it's a big no we could be wrong uh but you know, also, I thought they were like speaking to, you know, diverse, more diversity. I don't see any diversity in these picks of tastemakers. So I'm already turned off. It's like what like you're you're writing one thing in the copy of your website. But what you're showing me for your featured tastemakers is not reflecting what you wrote. Yeah. So now we already have an authenticity and, and an honesty problem. I will tell you the predominantly who I see. And I don't know if this is an algorithm thing, because you never know how much is like your algorithm and how much is actual reality, because welcome to the modern world. But when I do go on TikTok and I see things, um, I really only see the men. Hang on. Are the, okay, so for what you're it's saying, not that I, the, and the I don't know if that's my space, algorithm the bookish space? or if that's just like for bindery when I see bindery like related um, shit on TikTok. Yeah. It's almost always the boys, and like maybe every handful of videos, I get one of the the females. Um, but it's always the guys, always. Interesting. Always. And and it could just be my algorithm. I mean, a full disclosure, it could just be my algorithm. Maybe I somehow interact more with these videos, and now the algorithm is muddy. Like, you don't know. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. But you really don't. Right. It's curious. But still. And I wonder if other people have a similar experience. Wow. I I am okay. Color me intrigued. <laughs> color me intrigued. Yeah, I think it's gonna be very interesting to to see how this goes and if it really does kick off. Um, it really does seem like you're gonna get discounted labor as a publisher. Yeah. Um. And on top oh. of that, you're gonna get percentage of all the other people who aren't gonna be green lighting books or whatever because they're just little like people like me so say i sign up in december or whenever they open it up to general pop like i'm not getting the ability to green light a book right like who the hell am i okay but so interesting you'll get 25 percent of whoever signs up to be my thing right right okay so i'm on inky phoenix's bindery and she's got on her bookshelf an Inky Phoenix original coming soon. And it says current phase consideration. And then there's a link to click on watch our progress, but there's nothing in there when I click on it. But um, I will have to keep our tabs on this to see. Okay. So there are one, two, there are five phases, consideration, editorial, design, printing, and published. It says consideration means reviewing manuscripts and deciding which book we want to publish. At the end of this phase, we offer an author a book deal. So who, who was that one? Inky Phoenix. Inky Phoenix. What are these people who are this? I think she's the first one on that on that list in that email of yours. Oh, got it. So that's interesting. Um, I'll d- I have to like make a note to check back maybe in like a month and see what phase they're in now. Because also like when it says um when you have that thing where it says watch our progress, is that just you telling me what phase you're in? Cause like that's. Wait, isn't this lady. She used to be in the wellness space. I thought, hold on. Who Inky Phoenix. I don't, I don't know this person at all. So I can't tell you. <laughs> Let's just see. 
Catherine, she is a yoga instructor. She's in the, um, she's in the wellness space. I know her from something else. Um, she, she is actually like a legitimate influencer. Uh huh. And I, that might be why she's the only one who has <laughs> that book thing up. Um, yeah, she's, She's pretty like big in the wellness space, yoga instructor, all these things. Okay. She has her own books that she's written. Okay. She is. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, this name's really familiar. Okay. That so might be she, got... like, she's the only one that's got a book thing. Oh, she's, she's not. She's not. Easy Cat has one too, an Easy Cat oh. original. His is also in the consideration phase. So that's two. And, um. But I mean, between her plus, she's got like 14,000, she's got 13 and a half thousand followers on whatever her like House of Phoenix yoga meditation platform is. 200 on her own personal one and 12,000 12, um, 12, on her. So she's got like a quarter of a million followers across these yeah. platforms just on Instagram, which. Yeah. It doesn't include any of her other stuff. She's got a lot of people. Just Just Alley also has a book that's in the consideration phase. So does uh Fantasy and Friends. So maybe they all do. Let me check this boundless. Does she have one too in consideration? But it looks like she's already got some sort of collection of authors because she's got Meet Our Inky Authors. I don't know what that means. P. J P. Jelly Clark is in there. Are these people? Yeah, so that all they... of them have a book that's currently being considered. Okay. And you're saying Inky Phoenix has what? Are you on her home page? It looks like she has like her own book book club, maybe. Yeah. She's got like her own book club. This is something else. Oh, are you looking at the Meet the Launching Imprints at Bindery Books post from September 13th? No, I'm just going through her Instagram. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm still on Bindery. Okay. I've oh, that's on. okay. So this is interesting, right? So that post that I just that I just mentioned, Meet the Launching Imprints at Bindery Books, when I mm -hmm. click on it. It says view the post on Instagram, but is it going to open up here too? Maybe it's just taking a long time. I don't know. She has a podcast episode on whatever her podcast is called Free Cookies. Um, that's with the founders of Binder. Interesting. So I don't know. This is just like a, a rabbit hole I'm going down. So you were calling I mean, with me and so are all the listeners. This is, I mean, we're discussing. This is, we told them we, we'd come back with more updates. We're watching. Mm -hmm. We're watching Bindery grow, and we'll be coming back to, to t talk about it. Let us know what y'all think about this. Did y'all even know about it? Did you listen to our first episode, or we kind of read through how it all works? This is very interesting. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I gotta, I, you know, I gotta be honest. Like, there is nothing about Bindery that excites me, though. Do you know what really irritated me? So if you go to Bindery's you, you, uh, Instagram, you can see it, but it's also on their TikTok. They did this, like, today is the day when they launch, and none of the audio, because it's all clips from different people, they're all, yeah. like, ridiculously different levels. It's it's so annoying. Oh, okay. And it's probably something I only noticed because I, like, make things with another person, and, like, right. I do try. I'm not, like, a good audio mixer, but, like, I do try to, like, put you and I at, at least at, similar levels, so level. it's exactly. not, like, terrible. And I'm sure there's plenty of room for my improvement, but this was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> Amateur hour. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm very disappointed by the lack of diverse faces. There's two in their tastemakers. I didn't see two. I saw one. There's two. So ladies. That's um I don't know. That's a little disappointing. But, you know, definitely want to see. Because they again, like I want to see if there are books they have in consideration. If they move past to the editorial process, and let's see how many of these actually get to the 
we're publishing it process. I was just wondering how many about. people are going to sign up because I mean, Instagram they only have like twenty three hundred people following, just like Bindery. Um, let me see if I can find them on TikTok. They have five hundred people that follow them on TikTok. So like, so they're who, not really making a a serious splash, if you will. So I'm not really sure. Like, it's weird that you would have these people that you're leveraging. Like, are you even leveraging them? Like, even their TikToks, I'm looking at them, they get, like, the most has gotten, like, 1,200 views. Most of them get, like, four. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know. Oh. Hey, uh, Oh. oh, what do you what do you see? So my one of my favorite creators to follow, Rebecca Thorne, has posted something about it. And uh, we'll have to watch this later, but she has a TikTok about it. And um, she's like, she doesn't look like she's part of it. She's like, my dream is launched and I'm thrilled to see what happens. <laughs> I don't know if that's sarcastic or not. Right. I can't hear it. But um. Oh, this raised a lot of red flags. Yep. Okay. So she's gonna have an interesting take. I said it to you. Uh, okay. I love her takes. Yep. I think her takes on the on the publishing industry are very very good, especially the things that seem to pry, prey on smaller creators, others, et cetera, et cetera. And this is what right. Bindery feels like. Okay. Well, that's interesting. And given how small their their followings are across two social media platforms, I'm right. concerned. Like, what have you signed yourselves up for? I mean, do they even know? I don't even. I don't know. I do not know. I mean, I know it's in beta. It's not like this is like a four-year-old thing, but. No, but like just based off of, um, you know, what they're about, it's not making people want to follow them to learn more or to at least follow along with what's going to be going on with their progress of being a new company in this publishing space. I mean, Patreon, which granted Patreon's been around for a really long time, has 272,000 followers on Instagram. Right. You haven't cracked five. Right. How are people finding you? Yeah. That's a good question. And not just like, you've question. got these people, you're leveraging their platforms, but like, presumably you want other people to join so that you can make more money off of their memberships, right? How, how are, how, how are people finding you? Yeah, because... Yeah, and how's that gonna how's that gonna work when you're trying to like sell these books? I don't know. Because also, so let's say, okay, they all have books that are being considered or whatever. Are they gonna be doing is each bindery tastemaker going to just be pushing their book? Or are they obligated to push all the books that are being that are being published with the help mm -hmm. of the other tastemakers? You know what I'm saying? It sounds like, like is it is be it in is their it own little all, silos of imprints? Right. Is it all tastemaker hands on deck for each book that Bindery publishes, or are they really keeping it tastemaker to tastemaker? I guess we're gonna find out, right? I but yeah. it sounds like they're gonna be all in their own little silos, like promoting their own little thing. Yeah. Or unless they're gonna be doing promo stuff. But like how much promo work have you put into this for Bindery? Like they have a podcast. They have all these little TikToks. You've been putting all these things in. Bindery has a podcast? Some sort of, no, like uh, the oh. Catherine Budgie person. Did. Oh, okay. Um, or maybe they have a podcast. I don't know. Um, but it sounds like you're already putting in a bunch of legwork for this yeah. thing. And that's fine. Like, if you yeah. want to put the legwork in to get it get it up on the ground, off the ground. But I don't know. Like, is it going to catch on? I... I... I don't know. I I I, I really don't. <laughs> They're like two old ladies talking about Facebook. <laughs> this Facebook thing. Gonna... <laughs> I mean, it's a valid question. They do not mm -hmm. have a lot of followers, and for well, coming in talking and that's about talking it. about shaking up the industry and you know putting giving a voice to those who haven't had one in this current publishing space, you would think they would have more followers, and you would think there'd be more buzz about bond bindery throughout you know, mm -hmm. the various platforms that are, you know, bookish, but that, like I've heard no one talk about them. 
I also think it's interesting to do this predominantly with TikTok. Yeah. Because though TikTok, mm-hmm. I think, has a lot of, like, as a conglomerate, a lot of persuasion, I don't know how much each TikToker has persuasion right. compared to other platforms where you spend more time with somebody. So, like, right. someone, like, I keep thinking about Books and Lala. Books and Lala, if you got Books and Lala to do something like this, people would back you, right? right. Or you get more people interested in it. Because so she true. has a very loyal following of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but most of these people already have Patreons or memberships or things. Exactly. They have very solid things. So why are they going to start another one? So I just don't know how with some of these newer people. Like, I don't even know who half the TikTokers are. Even when I see the same TikTokers over and over again, it takes a long right. time for me to know who you are. Yeah. But when uh, you're YouTubers, you you learn your YouTubers. When you see Instagram yes. people, you learn them. Yes. Because you're spending more time with them. Even exactly. if you're scrolling through, there's people that you constantly go back to. Yep. That's very true. I just, I feel like the TikToks just fly. Yeah. It's a weird, it's a weird thing on TikTok where, um, where the, the, the creators don't stick in my brain. And you know what it reminds me of? Like, what's that phrase? It's something like somebody needs to see something like six times before they remember it. So like, that's why like real estate people send you a bunch of right. mailers, right? Yep. So that maybe you remember the real estate agent and then you buy the house with them or whatever mm-hmm. when you finally go to sell your house. Uh, that's what TikTok feels like. That's why I think TikTok works. It's like you see the seven husbands, husbands of Evelyn Hugo like 40 times in yeah. an hour. And you're like, well, maybe I should pick up that book. Right. Or the next time they're in the it's bookstore, not, they see it. They're like, oh, I saw TikToks about that book. Yeah. It's not so much that you're like, this really lovely creator that I watch all the time named Jane. Right. Right. Well, shut it's, up about this. Right. It's not, not the sure influencer. that happened. Right. It's not really the influencer. It's the amount of times that book has been shown to you via your FYP. Yeah, I think that's the real driver. I don't think the real yeah. driver is the people, but like on a longer form content, maybe I'm just a diehard for longer form content, but like longer form content, you create bonds with people. Yeah. Like actual people. I mean, that's why, honestly, BookTube is still my favorite. Look, I love me a good 45 minute video all about books. I will take that I over like I find a 40 more second books TikTok any way. day. I certainly there have. There are people. I don't even like that I watch all the time. They they have like none of the same takes on stuff, but I watch them all the time because they are constantly showing me new books that Mm -hmm. I want to see. Yes. Yes. Yep. Exactly. I don't care what you're saying about them other than what they, (laughs) but I think I want, you know, I know you're going to expose me to stuff that maybe I've never heard of. And so I watch them. Exactly. Maybe not religiously, but when they come up on my, recommended thing i'm like oh yeah i'll watch that one exactly i know that person let me see what they're, they're talking about today exactly i mean i'm look i'm still very curious of how this is all going to shake out and mm-hmm. i'm definitely curious to see what are these books that are currently in the consideration phase you know and are they gonna make it to the final stage and you know what are they what are they know. I'm very curious to see what Rebecca Thorne says, so maybe we can make this this be loud. Hold on. Yeah. Watched. Let's talk about it. You guys may remember me from a month ago when I was deep diving into what Mindery was. The pitch was that you pair an author with an influencer so that they can promote the author's book. But of course, this raised a lot of red flags for people because we have been taken advantage of a lot on apps like this. Authors write something and everybody and their mother wants to jump on board and profit off of what they've written. So I did a deep dive into Bindery about a month ago to figure out whether or not that was actually happening. And my answer is not really. Is Bindery for every author? No, absolutely not. But it is for authors who don't really want to do any kind of social media marketing on their platforms. If you're a new author and all you want to do is write books, Bindery is the perfect place for you to go. And if you are a traditionally published author who is trying to get some kind of indie royalty rate, Bindery is the perfect place for you to go. As an indie author, your rate would be a little lower if you went with Bindery versus if you just did it on your own. But again, you get that influencer who's going to be pushing your book to a private audience, which frankly could be huge depending on how the marketing goes. So it's really 
released today, and I am so excited to take a look at it. So I went on to binarybooks.com, and I opened up one of their profiles, and I started scrolling around to kind of see what it was offering us. The first thing that I noticed is that there's a nice little blurb about each of the different presses in a very clean format. As a reminder, Bindery offers three different tiers of subscriptions per influencer. So it's $5, $12, or $25 a month, which is really no different than what you would be paying in Patreon. So this is literally trying to be a Patreon replacement for these influencers. Easy Cat specifically did mention that he's going to be taking down his Patreon now that this is live, which basically means that these influencers are pivoting into more of a book-focused Patreon. And as you continue to scroll down, you'll notice that there are covers everywhere on this platform. You don't have to watch the video to know exactly what books they are talking about inside this platform. There seem to be two sections. The first is the Patreon version, and then there's a second area with a little book icon. And if you click on that book icon, it takes you to a library of each influencer. What's really cool is that as you scroll down, you can see every single book that they've talked about, and when you click on it, it opens to a page that shows every video that has been talked about that book. So it's super easy to find exactly what your favorite influencer thinks about cool. the books that they are pushing. And then when you click on the book, it takes you to an option to buy from either bookshop .org, who we love, or Amazon, who we're ambivalent about. As a reminder, indie authors make more money on Amazon than they do on bookshop.org. Bookshop.org is populated by Ingram Spark, which means that our royalty rates are way lower there than they would be on Amazon. But for a traditional publisher, this wouldn't matter as much. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to decide between Bookshop.org, which helps our indie stores, or Amazon, which helps our indie author. But I do love that you can go straight on it and purchase this really easily. I think that's fantastic. So overall thoughts, I am incredibly excited about this, and I have been for a month and a half. The more I do research into Bindery and the people behind the program and the platform that they're using and the influencers involved, I am so, so stoked for this business model. Again, it's not going to be for everybody. If you want to do indie publishing, that's the direction you should go. If you want to do traditional, that's the direction you should go. But right now, the only way to get your book submitted to Bindery is by going through a literary agent, which means that they have to be some level of legit or these literary agents would be like flat out refusing them. I personally know seven authors whose literary agents have jumped at the chance to submit to Bindery. And these are big literary agents, like they are not small time. So what does this mean for the future? It means that we're going to have to wait and see. Do we know if this platform is going to be successful? I don't know. I will personally be signing up for some of these influencers because I really love their content and I'm excited to see what they do with this platform. But I don't know if it's going to be successful when it comes to publishing an actual book. It's going to take a while before they're ready to actually publish a book. The influencers start with a Patreon model and then once they earn enough money and have enough subscribers on that Patreon, that's when they are able to go out and start looking for novels to publish, which are, again, right now submitted by literary agents. But a couple of influencers did say that they would be open to indie projects in the future. So we're just going to have to wait and see. What do you guys think? Are you excited about Bindery or are you just kind of a little suspicious still? <laughs> Let me know. Suspicious. Mm. I'm still, still suspicious. suspicious. Still, still very much suspicious. Yeah. Right. But it's good to know that like they're being submitted by literary agents. So these uh -huh. are not necessarily being picked out of the thin air by the creators. I, yeah. I like the point about if you don't want to do social media as a small either author or indie author you can right. have the social media because i think that that's a common complaint is that if you don't do the social media then you're 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 not gonna do as well and you have to put in all this extra work and not everybody is that kind of person right yeah that's but, true i don't know yeah. i mean i get the point is that we have to keep doing these updates and like waiting and seeing yeah them. i just sure. don't know i just don't know how I just don't know how successful it's going to be if it's this teeny tiny. I don't, I don't either. <clears throat> I really don't. I really don't. And so that's interesting. So Easy Cat is going to take down his Patreon. I wonder if others are going to follow suit if they have existing Patreons. But some uh, of the things that people like about Patreon is that you're not just getting like book focus stuff all the time like a lot of people do a lot of other things on their patreons to give yeah. you like, a more well-rounded experience with their creator and that's not like a given for everybody but like that's that's a piece a very common piece to somebody's patreon perhaps and like what well, do they that, have the freedom to do whatever they want that's yeah, the that's the big thing about patreon are they still gonna have that freedom i don't know i don't listen if easy cat is also a gardener. I don't think Bindery probably wants him doing gardening posts. Whereas on his probably on his not. Patreon, he can talk about all of his life interest, gardening, what whatever. So and I maybe do that's think that's how like the Discord thing sort of works. So like if your Discord is your Discord and you can have different sections. But if you were putting out like 
I don't know, more generic live streams about, I know he does a lot of board game stuff. Like, right. With the board games, do they have to have their own little special space? Yeah. Interesting. There's just so much to watch. And I feel like it we're is. negative Nancy's after listening to Rebecca Thorne, but like, <laughs> I feel well, like, I feel like we're two skeptical old ladies who are like, I don't know, man. Sounds sounds fishy. But also, we don't know. Like, she may have an interest in setting up a boundary for herself. Yeah, that's true, too. You know what I mean? We're like, I don't. I'm just looking at. I'm just curious to see what happens with this thing. Yeah. Um, Despite the fact that I've signed up for it, I'm not really caring. <laughs> right. So, hey, this is like, you know, this is one of the new kids on the block. You know, um, we talk about bookish things, so we're going to talk about them. You know, and see how it shakes out. And of course, I I got my eye open on like, okay, well, who are the other tastemakers going to be? You know, yeah. And are they going to get out of TikTok? Right. I mean, I know that these people also have platforms in other places, but like, you're predominantly a TikToker. Like William Dozier is has a YouTube because he did well on TikTok. Now, see, I consider each cat mean? a bookstagrammer. Yeah, and he went over to TikTok and. Like, so we. Like, and the other girl, but they're I consider sourcing her a people. YouTuber. It feels, it feels yeah. like they're sourcing people from TikTok. Yeah. Well, look. One thing we can't deny is that everybody wants to like cash in on the TikTok success yes. as it relates to books. And mm-hmm. so, um, I don't know. Uh, hmm, I don't know. I, whatever. I'm. We'll be we'll be checking back. We'll be checking back in because look, they all now have books that are under consideration. So we've got to keep tabs and see what's going on. We got to yeah. keep tabs to see what what other featured tastemakers are going to show us, and then we got to keep tabs on whenever they open it up for everybody to just go ahead and create their own bindery community or whatever you want to call it. But if you have to like, I would just love to see the financials is what it is. So it's like you have to make a certain amount of money to be considered to have an imprint, right? Mm -hmm. Which makes sense. I mean, mean, they're not going to put money into something that isn't generating revenue. It's basically showing that you have a fan base that's going to like, you know, whatever. Um, Exactly. That's a lot of work. It's all a lot of work. It's all a lot of work. And like... There's also people that have a ton of engagement that might not also have like a huge Patreon. Right. Which this is basically becoming because not everybody can afford to like be members to people's things. And like the fact that your lowest tier is $5, whereas on other places your lowest tier can be like a dollar. And you can have like a tip jar and you can come in. I mean, I say I do mine where the tiers don't matter. Like you pay whatever you want to pay. Everything's exactly the same. Yeah. Um, Because, and a lot of people do that. Like funny Fridays does that. A lot of people do that because it's not so much about, it's about trying to encourage community and not so much like um, making some sort of exclusivity or anything like that. Right. And also times are fucking hard. Like, absolutely. If you want to give me a dollar, Every yep. month from your little pocket. Yep. That's nice. Thank you. Mm-hmm. But you're not any different to me than somebody who's like, yeah, I got $10 to spare every month. I'm going to spend it Yeah, on you. Yeah. That's also very nice. Yeah. But maybe one day you don't have those $10 and I wouldn't want you to feel like, you know what I mean? I'm actually sitting here thinking about like all of the missed opportunity for getting tastemakers that are on bookstagram and and youtube that they mm-hmm. are not focused on which is so crazy to or me or have they reached out to them and they said no have they reached out to somebody like a book maybe Lava and they're like absolutely not right like, like jess a- would be phenomenal at this yeah yeah i know that jess also is like overwhelmed with other things and all that kind of stuff and maybe she wouldn't want to do it maybe right. she would. i don't know i don't answer for jess but like right. Jess would be phenomenal. Jess has a really lovely following of people who are very committed to her and engaged yeah. to her with her. Yep. And guess what? She's took her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I'm thinking about specifically on Bookstagram, like Book of Sins, that lady that created the whole Caribbean 
reading mm-hmm. thing, like she's chock full of Caribbean read recommendations or Melanated Reader. Bow. Melanated Reader as well. And um, oh, there's this black guy on Inst- on Instagram where he just focuses on nonfiction. Like you guys are missing out. And they have very loyal and active dedicated communities. Hmm. You want the people that are going to stick with you no matter what. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We're going to find out. We're, we're certainly going to find again. out. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, how about some book recommendations? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about some I've got to get after... I've got to get to Costco. <laughs> you got to get to Costco. I've got to find some pizza. Um Yes. So, I you mentioned something that was going to tie into my first book, and that is Monsters of Fans Dilemma. Mm-hmm. Um, which I asked you if you've read this. This is by Claire De- De- Dederer. De- what is with everybody with these re- repetitive r- 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 names today? <laughs> or, or, like, I think. Um, I think I'm just going to pull up the thing to play for you. Oh my God, I was looking at Rebecca Thorne's face and said play. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So this is like a collection of essays. And it essentially starts um, with the author kind of kind of trying to come to terms with the something that like we all talk about all the time in in the bookstagram space uh, or the books bookish space. This whole idea of separating the art from the artist. Yes. And so like this person is a like a movie critic, and so it kind of starts in this premise of like how do you deal with uh, these like great movies that are made by terrible terrible people. And then how does that change our relationship with them? This conversation we like have Woody with Woody Allen. Like Woody Allen, like, oh, what's his face with the with the kid the, the little lady? Oh my god. Uh Polanski. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there's and, and it's a conversation we have all the time, which sounds like it would be boring, but in reality it's this incredibly well done, nuanced conversation, mm. an honest conversation about how it's such a difficult thing to navigate because yeah. you what you may have watched something, read some whatever it is. You you consumed a thing by an artist and it was phenomenal, changed your life, whatever, and then you found something out. Or you found something out and now do you ever consume anything again? Um does the scale of how how important the art is change the thing or the scale of what the person did? Does that change your it's so nuanced and this is such a, like a, these essays are such a wonderful exploration of all this, but it's also an exploration of being a woman and in a creative space. And what I was talking about in the beginning of the episode about how a lot of these things, especially around writing or creating is a very isolating uh, individual thing. And you need to have the space in your life to be able to be alone and, to yeah. create and to have the capacity to create and how typically men are the ones who have this all the time um and how it's so much harder as a woman in a, as a creator to to do that because if either you just are single and you just live very selfishly for yourself which is lovely and I would love to do that um <laughs> or you you are taking on more traditional things in your life but instead of you know if you're going to be a mom you have to what feel bad that you're locking the door and asking for the time right but you're ever are you ever shedding all of the mental burden of that you know what i mean like so there is never like some true equivalent in in the same way as traditionally men have of just being able to lock the door and do the thing and it's the same so there's all these essays about about that kind of idea and the art from the artist and it, they're just phenomenal and I think they're really well done and I, I could not stop reading this I thought this was so freaking good and and I absolutely love it I love wow. it I think it's everything we try to talk about sometimes on Gotta the internet it. about books and we don't talk about it this way because I don't know why we're afraid to be like this is a freaking messy topic and there is yeah. no right answer. So you like, you know, I think there's people that we can be much more broad strokes with, like predominantly in book or social media, people are like, either I don't care about JKR 
or I don't know, and they keep going. Mm-hmm. Or the people who know that are like, I'm done. And like, it's very like cut and dry. Right. But then right. there's other people that it's so blurry. And then it's so like, well, what, what, what do I do? Like, does this yeah. have anything to do with their work? Like what? And it becomes this very nuanced, very shades it's of gray very conversation. Confusing. And it's very difficult. Cause like, can like maybe I can personally separate you know this person from their work but then another person I can't because the thing that they did is harder for me to separate and does that change if you have the opposite like exactly oh that's so interesting right and I'm sitting here thinking about how like I just I can't listen to R. Kelly but I can listen to Michael Jackson yeah oh I gotta read that book I gotta it's read real, They're really good. They're really good essays. I think you'd really enjoy them. I gotta read it. Yeah. Yeah. And that seems to be a theme that keeps popping up in a lot of my books is about, you know, like women. Basically, like how I would really love to have a wife. <laughs> right. Like in the very traditional sense, I would love to have a wife. Like right. things like I could take on the world with a wife. Hello. Yes. Absolutely. And does that not just tell you how important that role is? Right. Right. Yeah. All right, my recommendation uh, is this uh, interconnected short story collection that I just fell in love with. I got this from Pantheon earlier in the year, and I started reading it like around February, but then I started mm-hmm. getting busy with the move, and then I just put it down. But this is an autobiography of Skin by Lakeisha Carr. Oh, I see. I keep seeing. Oh that. my goodness gracious! This is truly phenomenal um it is a dazzling and masterful portrait of interconnected generations in the south from a singular new voice offering a raw and tender view into the interior lives of black women it is at once a powerful look at how experiences are carried inside the body inside the flesh and skin and a joyous uh, testament to how healing can be found within in love mercy gratitude and freedom miss Carr blew me away i mean Truly, but I want to read this again. This is going to stay with me forever. There was this one story um, in here about a new mom who was suffering from just a horrendous bout of postpartum depression. And Mm -hmm. she is the mother of a new baby boy. And she had such a deep fear of him losing his life to the terrors that haunt black people that she started bleaching his skin so that he would just blend in. I mean, just like tore my freaking heart out. This is just, I I cannot say enough good things about this collection of short stories. Please, everyone, just read it. Just read it. And Miss Carr, you have have made a new fan out of me. This was wonderful. Oh, I'm going to have to read that. Also, I'm sad. I know. An autobiography (laughs) of skin by Lakeisha Carr. So good. So good. What if we ever created a world where somebody would even? Yeah. Anyway, now I'm sad. I'm sorry, but read it, no, everyone. It's, read it's, it. It's it's the right response. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Read it. It was <laughs> phenomenal. Like every story in here is so gripping and yeah. so raw. Just it's out of this world. I've really been uh really getting into short stories. Or collection. It also lately. feels like the year for short stories. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people are coming out with short stories collections. Yeah. Amy Coles is coming out with a short stories collection. I know. Are you excited about it? Or how are you feeling about it? Okay. And I really so excited hope... that you're gonna pre order it? Or oh wait, I is this a pre- publisher that you work with already? I don't know who publishes him. I have to figure okay. that out. And I need to see if I can get Okay. Because I, I saw that. I was like, ooh, is Alyssa going to be all excited about this? I was like, wow, this is really interesting. Yes. Wow. Uh, so it looks like Rules of Civility was published by Penguin. And then my edition of um, Gentleman in Moscow looks like it's William Morrow, maybe? Or is that Viking? I can't tell from here. And then I don't know who published Lincoln Highway. Okay, so Table for Two is going to be published by Viking. Do you work with them? Who's Viking under? PRH? I have to find out. <laughs> well, you, you got time get, because it comes out in I April. Got, I got vintage on my list, but maybe. Yeah. 
You got time. Although, like, I've already received several 2024 Yeah, arts. I've gotten to my So, um, oh, it's now's, Penguin. now's the time. Not. Penguin doesn't like the Disney bar. Just request it. Just request it. Table for two. Anyway, folks, um, hope you enjoyed that conversation. Let us know what you think about Bindery. And um, does it intrigue you? Think you'll sign up? Either as a community member or do you have any interest in actually being a tastemaker yourself for Bindery? Let us know. We're curious. We're curious. There's no judgment. We're just like reporting on what's happening with this new platform. So, um, yeah. Any last words? How do I get on the Viking list? <laughs> <laughs> do they not know I'm upset? <laughs> we used to live in the same town until i moved <laughs> maybe i just need to go troll around his town and find him we're gonna traveling. get you on the we're gonna get you on the viking list don't worry about that um anyway that's that's gonna do it for i us. would die i would be so happy i know you're gonna get it i'm, I'm just putting it out there right now putting it out there right now so all right anything else is that it i'm Can i gotta go to costco him? Let's let's make all that happen. Let's make all that happen. Look, we're done. I gotta go to Costco. We're out of here. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's bye. Bye. bye.